So. We return. It's loud for me. We stand in the streets of Castle Verminia. And as you stand, the air is still. You grip your weapon tightly in your hand as you stand before the massive bone leg of the undead giant towers over you and you can hear him growling from within an empty skull. Your brow furrows as sweat drips down. You've been in worse situations before, but you must press forward. You must end this threat. The city is under siege. The smoke from the buildings sting your eyes, and the smell of blood and fire fills your nostrils. You are tired. You seek a rest from this place in an ale. The skeleton shifts its feet. You stare into his eyes as you brace for the next attack. Its arm raises into the air, its massive axe held high above its head. You hear the wind of the weapon coming down and quickly step to the side, spinning free to prepare a counterattack. You continue spinning. You don't remember setting this much power into your defense, but the battle's been intense so far. A familiar sight enters your vision again and again before you slam hard into the surface of the ground. The spinning stops as your vision fixates on the still standing body of yourself. Blood spurts from your shoulders where your head once was. The body collapses to the ground as the sounds of Zormir can be heard before a flash of light in silence. Ar Arlo! Ar Your eyes slam back open as you see the skeleton crumble to the ground. Your friends rush forward towards a dark creature weaving powerful spells. You reach for your sword to help, but it will not unsheath. You run to help them, but everything seems ineffective. The creature falls as silence enters the streets again. Zormir rushes past you, screaming your name. Arlo! Guard, somebody, somebody help. help! Somebody, somebody help. help! There's, There's still, still something we can do, do right? right? You come to the realization that you are no longer of this world. You watch as your friends prop your body against a nearby building. Their voice is muffled as the colors stay a solid gray around you. Zormir, I am afraid there's nothing we can do. Here, grab it. Grab his head, gently, and now grab his body. Let's pull it over to the side, out of sight. There has to be something. We're in the greatest city, the biggest city on this island. There has to be something that can be done for this. Hurry. Hurry before more <clears throat> hordes come through the gate. You can almost feel their pain. Here. Mm. 
grab his cloak and cover him over. Quickly, we don't have much time. They wrap the body, gently lift it up. We can't let Arlo just go like this. He gave me you. He gave me life through you. We can't just let him pass away here without doing something. Arlo is lost. There is nothing more we can do. If you wish to pay your respects, do so quickly. Tell me, what god did he worship? Oops. They pick up the body and slowly begin walking north. You see them carrying it through the streets as you stand there where you once stood. What would you like to do? I would like to try to I'd like to try to reach out to him if I I can see everything that's happening. I know I can't be dead. This has got to be some kind of a magic trick. Something I, I've got to be in another dimension. I want to try to reach out to them. I'm scream at them. I'm right here. I can see you and I can hear you. You scream as loud as you can, but they never turn. They continue walking, carrying your body. Zormir cradling your head. They slowly start to disappear within the streets. I just, I just yell, Zormir, it's me, your friend. Don't go without me. I need to be there with you. I need to protect you guys. You, they disappear around a corner. You stand there surveying your surroundings. You see the fires burning. You look and see the hordes coming. But your friends took time to carry you off. You run forward, chasing them down. You keep screaming at them. You stand in front of them. Till you see Zormir pass through you. Tears fill their eyes. You see them arrive at the temple. They push past the throng of those who mourn and drag their own dead inside. You try to make sense of it all. They stand near a priest. Blaylock takes out his money, fumbling around as coins and gems fall to the floor. Tears are in his eyes as he implores the priest to bring you back. The priest's hands are steady and worn. The look of tiredness fills his face and seeps into his wrinkles around his eyes. More silence. The priest looks around and kneels beside your body before looking up and speaking to your friends. Tell, Tell me, me, what, what god, god did he worship? He did not worship a god. No. Oh, that makes things, things difficult. difficult. The words echo in your ear as you see your friends stand around your body and see the others filled out within the temple. He asks again, what deeds has he done? Your friends muster the courage to speak of your deeds. Well, tell, tell me, me. What, what kind, kind of, of person, person was he? He was 
good. He was very good intention. He wanted to rid the world of evil. He did lay down his life to protect others. And on multiple accounts, he has done so. He has saved many lives personally and uh, as a group with us. One of them being mine. He sacrificed his fairly fair family heirloom, the spirit of the great dragon wrath here to cleanse my soul and rid me of evil that had overtaken me. He gave up something that meant the world to him so that I could survive. Did he adhere to the laws of the land and of man in general? Better than anybody I do. And what other good things did he accomplish? Anything will help. Stories. Tear is a just God, but he wouldn't suffer us bringing someone back who would cause pain to others. Mm. Here you have before you is a a man who has sacrificed to avenge the town of Cape Spassel, even without personally knowing those of Cape Spassel saw the atrocities and avenged them. He has see, he has he has helped purge the king You hear them stumbling through their words. They lay your head down. The priest promises to do what he can. And as you see other priests rush toward your lifeless corpse, you see your friends wrap arms around one another and slowly walk out of the building. The priests cover your body, begin carrying it back. And as you follow them back, you see the broken, the wounded, and the lost crying over their loved ones, the rich and the poor. Go ahead and make a perception check for me. Fifteen. Okay. You notice as you follow your own body back that the bodies of the rich are being taken back to other rooms as the bodies of the poor lie there on the floor in the temple. The poor beg for mercy, for forgiveness. They beg for justice. But it seems others are serviced before them. Your body is laid to rest on a cold stone slab. The priest lays your head next to your still corpse. Time passes. You're not quite sure how long. It seems so odd in here. A minute could be years. The priest comes in and out of the room. No idea how long it's been. You see glimpses of others. They see you as well. You call out to them, but they just stare at you. Blank faces. People in a crowd. They look just like you. Gray. Lifeless. Some of them disappear. Others walk lost in the temple. 
even more try to embrace their families much like you did with your friends but all for naught the priest returns a look of determination and weariness in his eye he kneels beside your body and begins to pray the room begins to shake you hear rumbling a bright flash grab you grab for your eyes priest can you hear me no priest you don't hear the priest you hear soft music playing in the distance. It's quieter here. No more crying. Solemn silence. You wipe your eyes and look around. Stone room filled with pillars. Gold inlets wrap around the marble and shimmer. Everything has a sheen like looking through oiled glass. You look up and see before you, or look up into the, the ceiling and stare into the shimmering pool of stars and purple mists. The mist wisps through the sky. Before you, in the distance, rise three large stands, each with an individual behind them glowing softly. Arlo Viato, step forth and be judged. I'll nervously kind of look around and you, you can see me? Can, can you hear me? As I kind of step forward. The one in the middle nods at you. The three foreboding figures never break gaze. It's almost as if they're all making eye contact with you individually at the same time. Until you approach and stand within a small circle in the center of them. Arlo Viato, you stand before the triad. We are those who judge they who are to be sent on into the afterlife. It is through us that all judgment comes. You will be found worthy re to return to the material plane, or you will become stone in the wall of the faithless. There is a pause, an awkward silence, as your own mind contemplates the booming words coming from the individual. We shall each ask you a question of your character. As for having no faith, we are here to judge the faithless on the behalf of our servant in the material plane. Moments pass. The god to your left rises from their stand. You see a balding man. Cuts and bruises fill his body. Wearing only a small breechcloth, he hunches over slightly like he's been beat severely. Arlo Viato. I am Ilmatar broken god of suffering and compassion. I will ask you to answer for your actions we have observed. In the land of Drakenwald, in the now desecrated city of Capes Vassal, your friends mourned the loss of a savior and friend. 
you spat on this soul in his hour of pain, suffering, and death. You moved not to help them survive, and there was joy in your heart at their passing. Speak to your actions, and you shall be judged accordingly. So, so you want to judge me on one thing in my life. If, if you knew I did that, then you know why I did it. You know their kind destroyed my city and was part of my family and my heritage being destroyed by the tieflings. They killed my they killed our family dragon. They ransacked our town. So why would I not have ill ill feelings towards them? I know that he didn't do it. It was just a random it brought back so many memories of my father holding my mother and me running for our lives, trying to get away from the horde. They was killing everybody. Would you not feel the same way if somebody was killing you and your family and everybody you knew and everybody you love? Maybe in the heat of the moment, I might have lost my cool. But I can't lie to you and tell you I have regret. I know I didn't know him. But it was just the sight of seeing him. It just something overcame me and everything that I memories flashing back of the bloodshed the blood running down the streets by the hands of the tieflings. For that, I'm sorry for that, but it was just a momentary lapse. If you knew about that, then you know everything that I've done to try to prevent evil and to cast evil out in this world. All we do is fight evil people, me and our group. We're fighting those who oppress other people and are killing other people. Ilmater is unmoving and stares down at you. I need you to roll a d20. Sixteen. Okay. In the light of suffering and compassion, you have been judged. Ilmater sits down and rests back into his seat, grabbing hold of it to keep from falling. Behind you, you hear. Allo, Viato. I am Torm the True, God of Duty. You turn and see a tall, 12 foot or so human with gray hair, long gray beard. His purple tinted armor glints against the light in the room. As he stands, you hear small, heavy thuds as a massive, ancient, golden-headed dragon appears from behind the stand and stares deep into your soul. The creature brushes a hand over its head, and it shakes a bit as it enjoys the pet. I will ask you to answer for the actions of your heart in the face of duty. In the land of Drakenwald, 
in the wasted seas of the Skarvyard Desert. You performed the duty of a soldier and a friend. You sacrificed great power from yourself to save the life of your friend, an honor among all. But your heart was not pure. While you cherished your friend in the friendship, you never forgave yourself for giving up your power. You coveted what was once yours, and even had doubts why you gave it up. A warrior of pure heart craves not these things. Speak to the actions of your heart, and you shall be judged accordingly. To this day, I don't regret sacrificing our dragon, Herathir, for Zoramir. Am I saddened by it? Of course. He's been in our family for centuries. I prized my friendship of Zoramir and the bond that I have had with this group to do that sacrifice for them. Herathir taught me over those weeks that when I messed up, he would come into my mind and tell me, do you think you should be doing this? Herathir steered me to be the person that I am. And because of that steering, I was happy to give up and sacrifice him and give Zoramir another chance. Am I happy about it? Some days, no. Some days, absolutely. Would I do it again? Yes. Yes, I would. But when you have taken something that's been a part of your body and your soul, and he talks to you and he guides you, and then one second he's gone, there's an empty space. It's so hard to know what to do next. He was my guidance, and then all of a sudden he's gone. So I feel lost. I feel empty. But I have no ill war, ill, ill feelings towards ever having to do it. What I think what I did was to move our our journey forward for the end goal of why we are on Dragon Ball and why we are together as a group fighting this evil. Torm and the dragon gaze at you unwavering. Roll a d20. I don't think I have to. King Cuddles is just going to arrest me. <laughs> Damn it. Two. All right. Do I have inspiration for that? Nope. Torm sits down and the dragon raises its head under his hand again as they both continue to stare down at you. You see it unfurl its wings and kind of jut its head from side to side as it watches you turn toward the last god. You hear him stand as you turn. You see his eyes are covered with a bloodied bandage. His right hand is missing. He uses a large sword to support himself as he stands before you. Arlo Viato, I am Tyr, the maimed god, god of justice. His light gray beard covers his face and pours down his chest. His burly build makes him quite an imposing figure compared to the other two. I will ask you to answer for the actions of your swift judgment. 
in the land of Drakenwald, in the broken Lake Goldensbain, lake of our children, legacy of our people, an innocent child of Grumish, a simple orc by the name of Ogmal, begged for his life, a child born of inbreeding and low birth, a child who struggled with simple instructions in his short life. That child begged for his life as he was questioned, never betraying. You became swift justice for him. You chose his fate. Speak to the actions of your judgment, and you shall be judged accordingly. I don't have any. I don't have much to say about that. I don't. He was in misery and pain. So I just, I just gave him the easy way out. My heart still hurts about it. He was just a pawn in this game. There's our days that I wish I could do some of the things, redo them over again, change the way I do things. But what is past is past. And if I must be judged for what I've done, then so be it. Tear stands and watches, and it's almost as if you can see a glint of a tear in his eye. Roll a d20. Eleven. Tear sits down. You stand before the triad. He begins to speak. Arlo Viato, here in Celestia, in the halls of the Triad, you have been judged. The ground quivers beneath your feet. Deep echoes can be heard all around. Then, in an instant, darkness. And that's where the story ends. And, of course, I won't know anything today, will I? So, your fate has been decided. We'll find out in the next coming week what that fate is. So, for all those hanging out for this, stay tuned to see what happens with uh, with Arlo. That second uh, roll, man. That second roll. That was rough. Broke my heart. Broke my heart. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, for those that uh, stopped by for this, I hope you enjoyed this. I was trying a lot of new things, a lot of new things. So, um, for, <laughs> I put a lot of work into this really quick. So hopefully, uh, you enjoyed that. Now we're just going to hang out and talk. So if the, if the rest of the team wants to hop in, we can, uh, we can make that work somehow and chat, or we can play some Baldur's Gate and, uh, still chat, uh, as we typically do for our unofficial, official, unofficial pre-show show to banter and babble. Um, thank you, Galtier. Um, we'll be clipping this out, um, to, with its, uh, with its entirety and everything and putting that up on YouTube for those that missed that. And, and we'll get it up on anchor too, for, uh, for those in our listening audience. Um, so I had a lot of fun. Were were you were you nervous? Yeah, <laughs> shit, <laughs> dude. I mean, I feel like I feel like I was in the principal's office all over again. <laughs> I lived in there, so yeah. I mean, kudos to you. I mean, you you were able to bring in the clips of what people said and make that part of make it part of this narrative. So that that was that was that was pretty good. 
that was a last minute thing. That was, and I, and I was like, oh, that would be really cool if I could pull this out. So I was able to to get that in. Oh, there we we've got we've got some folks in here. Let's. Uh, Let me just tell you though, I'm just so glad you didn't bring in uh, Grayson's comments, but you did anyway. <laughs> Hey, you spit on him. I'm like, well, no shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Nobody, but you know what? Nobody ever asked me after that why I did it because I had a story and everything wrote out. Well, I think they did. We I think Blaylock had a... fighting orcs that were rampaging, you know, to the next town. Yeah, yeah. We We got so busy after that that nobody ever asked me why I did it. Yeah, that's just Arlo being Arlo. He's a little yeah, off his rocker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm not sharing screens. So we don't know what's going to happen? You will have no. to find out. You have to tune in and find out. He knew that before we got started, so he's not super angry at me. Um, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was pretty disappointing when he's like, yeah, you're not going to know tonight. Well, that, that's, that's why we were doing this tonight. Mm-hmm. Blaylock, what'd or you at think least of let the, me know and nobody else? What do you think of the, the the little new interface design that I was trying out? I think, I think it looked pretty good. No, yeah, it was nice. I like that stuff at the top where you can actually read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna switch our interface over so I can have us all up on the screen. Let me close this down. All right. Anyway, so we'll just I'll just click over on the ending. That was fun. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for coming by. Thanks for the follow. Dude, it's so about last night. <laughs> We will uh, talk to you. And until next time, we'll see you in the dungeon. Have a great night. I should put some music on. We'll, 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 give, we'll give a little ant house and stuff here. We didn't do that in the yeah. intro, so we'll, we'll do this. The end is upon us. I promise you now this is done with no problem with me. So watch how you're talking and where you've been walking. They call me the BBEG. I'm more than a little OP. I do what I want stuff. That's a mantra. Keep them running and gunning like Contra. I'm a monster. I'm a the end is upon us, I promise you now, this is the one, no problem with me. So watch how you talking, them where you've been walking, they call me the BBEG. I'm more than a little OP, I do what I want, still, yeah, that's a mantra. I keep them running and gunning like country, y'all, I'm a monster. Turn it up. What you know about the final boss? I got him trying to buy time with the sign of the cross. I redefine high crime and the meaning of loss. I'm off hip, but I'm body like I'm playing the cross. Beat to the beat to the EG, I'm keeping them queasy. I make it seem easy, acknowledge me, I'm a